Hey, welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James, and around here I like to review fountain pens and ink and paper. And look at that, it's all right there. But today, the highlight is this. Mandarin Orange Ink from Monteverde. It's fall here, and that means Pumpkins are orange. The coffee is orange. I, people putting all kinds of things in their coffee these days, right? It's okay. I'm not judging or anything about the coffee. Mine is Peruvian with a little bit of uh, sweetener and a little bit of half and half, and that's it. But you may be putting other things in there. All right. You, you mind your cup. I mind mine. Okay. This is Mandarin Orange Ink. And kind of like the tradition people have of doing crazy things to their coffee this time of year, I have the tradition of grabbing my Mandarin Orange Ink and getting this Birmingham Pen Company 6th Avenue pen and inking this puppy up with that orange ink. There's a couple of reasons. One, orange in fall kind of goes together pretty well, doesn't it? And the second is... It's also football season, high school football season here in Texas. So, you know, a little bit of support for the San Angelo Central Bobcats going on here as well. So being October and being football season and being that tradition has the ink out and in the pen, I thought I'd share this ink with you here on the channel. So I'll share with you writing samples on several kinds of paper and grades of paper. We'll look at dry times. We'll look at a water fastness test. And by the time this is all done, you'll know whether or not you do or don't like this Mandarin orange ink for your own writing. All right, we'll start as always with the Rhodia paper and the writing sample there. Again, the pen is this Birmingham Pen Company with a number six Nemesine nib, and it is a 0 0.8 millimeter stub. I really like the way this pen writes, and it suits this ink. Now, on the paper, this pen writes somewhat wet, so you can see that it is a very saturated orange, leaning a little bit to the red end of the orange spectrum. And on the Rhodia paper, you don't see a whole lot of color variation or anything like that. You do see just a slight shading. There's no feathering or anything like that. It's, it's well behaved on the paper. It doesn't go through the paper. It does what it's supposed to do. And that's to write and stay on that one side. And it does a good job of that. Just a very well saturated orange. You can see here again, that's a nice wet writing nib. And again, on the other side, no issues whatsoever. Just very well behaved on Rhodia paper. And here I also have it on a Yush paper. And again, writes a little bit differently. I, a Yush paper takes the ink in much faster than Rhodia. So you see a little bit different in terms of the shading and saturation. And mainly that it's a, a narrower line width on this paper. Same is true of these other pens and inks I wrote with. Just because it, it soaks up the ink very quickly, which is one of the qualities I like about a Yush paper. And again, here on the other side, I have a quote, and uh, you notice nothing came through and ruined that side at all. So very well behaved on the Ayush paper. Now looking at a very cheap paper, and I mean very cheap, a dollar for a pad, I think, if I remember right, it's 80 sheets at Dollar General, and this is just their little memo pad thing. Excellent paper made in India, very well behaved, and it, it likes fountain pens. So for a dollar, you can get a great little note taking or just, you know, quick writing paper does a good job and it's nice and smooth. Here again, the Mandarin Orange behaved very well. No issues whatsoever, no feathering or anything like that. Again, this is a wet nib. And on the back, you can see very well behaved, no issues at all. Of course, you can see what I've written, but there's no bleed through. It really did very well on this paper. And uh, again, you know, the, the shading is minimal on most papers with this ink, but you can see just a little bit through here. Now, if shading is what you're looking for, here's some Tomoe River paper. And as you can see here, then you get into a little bit more range in that shading. You can especially see it here exaggerated in the swatch. And let me tell you, this third pass over here was a puddle of ink. So this would take a very wet pen to get to a, this saturated and dark a result from this ink because your pen's not going to do this. But these two, it will do. And so you can see a drier pen is going to be here. A wetter pen is going to be about where, where this is. As you can see, it's really a good match to that wet nib. It looks good on Tomoe River paper. And then here we have it on a true red composition notebook made in Vietnam, sold in office supply stores all over the U.S. And here again, it behaves 
really well. Well saturated, no feathering, no issues on this side of the paper. And turning that over, no issues here either, which is impressive because this paper is really great to write on. It's a smooth writing paper, very fountain pen friendly. But some inks, as you can see by some other samples here, do come through. But the Monteverde Mater in Orange, not very well behaved on this inexpensive composition notebook as well. All right, now let's do an ink swatch. This will be our first pass. And as you can see, just a nice bright orange, that orange that you would expect from something called Mandarin Orange, right? Then we'll do our second pass. And just a light third pass over here, just in case. Like I said, this just has a nice vibrant orange color to it that I really like. While we let that dry, we'll do our regular writing dry times. Five seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, almost dry, and 60 seconds. All right, at 60 seconds, you are good to go. 30, it was almost dry, and again, this is a pretty wet writing pen, so, and I have used this in a dryer fine, are going to dry a little bit quicker, of course, and so, uh, you know, pretty average, I would say there, not too bad. All right, now it's time for our water fastness test. It's the one that always interests me a lot. See what we can figure out about that. I think we can see probably how this has performed. Uh, just FYI, this grid, I drew this days ago, so that is really well dried into the paper and had plenty of time to set and I've let this water sit there for at least a couple of minutes. Now that's an interesting result. So I don't think I've ever had anything come off quite that uh, completely. Uh, you can see an outline of where the water is and that orange ink is just mostly gone. Now zooming in, I can technically read what was written there. There is a shadowing of text that is left behind. So you might be able, in some circumstances, to at least discern generally what used to be there, but this is definitely not a water fast ink. The swatch is completely dried and you can see there kind of the shading and variation that is there. Again, it's minimal, but it is just a nice vibrant orange and you can coax a little bit of shading with a greater volume of ink. Now, I do want to show you the other side of this paper because this is where this ink really has some strength. And that is with all that vibrance and all the saturation, the amount of ink and the water test and everything else, nothing has come through this paper. So in terms of well-behaved on most papers, this ink ranks pretty highly. I know some of you are waiting for this. This is the chromatography, and it, there's, there's not a lot going on with the chromatography. This is orange ink, and of course that means it's made up of red and yellow primarily, but sometimes you expect to see a little bit more going on, but there's not. But one thing I do find interesting about the chromatography, this is where I wrote that original line. There is no hint of the red or of the yellow or of the combined orange at all. There is, however, the slightest blue-gray line where I originally wrote, and that's the same thing you're seeing over here. But it's interesting. There's just that slight bit here, and that's the only thing you can read is this little bit that's left. You can read that little bit of gray there as well. That's all that's left behind, and all of that orange, red, yellow is taken away. So in this case, the chromatography is a pretty accurate uh, foretelling of the the water behavior of this ink in the water test, which does not always happen. So let's talk about the pros and cons. So pro, I think it's a good value. Monteverde inks are generally very affordable and pretty easy to find, and I think a pretty good value in terms of their inks, and this one is no exception. It's very well behaved on most paper. In fact, all the paper that I shared with you today, it did great. Now I'm gonna put a check instead of a plus because this is a pro that is entirely just my opinion. It's not something like value and well-behaved. Those things, you know, are across the board for all of us. However, uh, this one is opinion, and I really like the shade and the saturation of this ink. 
It's not a boring orange. It's nice and bright and vibrant. And that's what I was looking for. And that's what I got. I didn't have to buy three different inks to find the orange that I wanted. I got this one and it was just what I wanted. And I like that. Now the con, I guess it would have to be said is it's water behavior. You know, it, it is not even a little water fast. Again, now, there's a shadowing of what I wrote, but I don't know for sure that that would be there with longer exposure. Uh, the bottom line is it's just not water fast. Now, it doesn't claim to be, so that's not a real knock. It's just something that you need to know. So would I recommend this ink if you're looking for a good vibrant orange? I would if you're trying to match that. Boy, that's perfect. There are other great orange inks out there. Maybe some of you have some recommendations. Share those in the comments below. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, God bless you and have a great week.